of the apparently odd things about our solar system is that all the planets seem to orbit our sun on a virtually identical plane. And that plane seems to mirror the spin of our sun. At first glance, even the spinning of our sun seemed a little odd. Why should the sun or even the planets spin at all? Surely if gravity was pulling all the matter inwards, shouldn't it just be a dense stationary objects? Thankfully, the sun and the planets do spin or there'd actually be no life on Earth at all. But the key to understanding what's going on is down to the conservation of angular momentum. Now, if you've ever watched an ice skater spinning on the ice, when they want to spin really, really fast, they pull their arms and legs in as close as they can get to the point about which they're revolving. When they want to slow down again, they extend their arms and legs away from their body. This is the conservation of angular momentum in action. For a stationary object, as you increase the distance something is from the rotation point, more force is required for you to push it round a single orbit that is having to travel a far greater distance around the circumference of the circle. Now, if you're in a virtually closed system, like either an ice skater spinning or a cloud of gas, that force can't actually increase or decrease. So instead, it results in a faster rotation as the size of the circumference decreases. A new star formation starts with an irregular cloud of gas. Gravitational forces over a long period of time causes the molecules within the cloud to be pulled in together, forming clumps of molecules. These clumps of molecules are then themselves pulled in towards the centre of the cloud. If you move slowly at first, this accelerate the getting pulled closer and closer to a slightly denser mass at the heart of the new star formation. Initially, forces will be coming from all directions at once, and they'll generally cancel each other out. However, at one point, a particularly large clump or a group of clumps will approach from one direction. This will cause the star to start spinning in a particular direction. Once this spin has been established, each new clump will be dragged into the centre will add that speed of rotation in the same direction. This is a bit like a, a roundabout in a children's playground. Once it's started in one direction or another, each new child who comes in will push and add their momentum to the existing direction of motion, and the whole roundabout will spin faster. Now, as the star grows in mass, so the gravitational forces increase. And the star actually becomes denser as a result. This, in turn, means the overall mass of the star is now actually close of the axis of rotation. So the star starts to spin faster. At this point, the star encounters another problem. The mass of the star near the axis of rotation doesn't have a great deal of distance to travel, but anything near the equator of the star is having to travel a great distance around to complete a single orbit. And the forces of all this spinning is actually threatening to rip the star apart. It's a bit like Olympic hammer thrower spinning faster and faster. And just like hammer thrower, the way to release some of that energy is to let go of the hammer. But instead of releasing in like in a single burst, the protostar allows the mass around the equator of the star to orbit at greater and greater distances from the centre of the star. This dramatically slows down the general rotation of the star and creates a large disk rotating in a single plane around the central pole of the star. This protoplanetary disk will eventually coalesce into planets, all orbiting the star around the same general plane. It's interesting to note, whilst the Sun has the vast amount of mass in our solar system, because the planets orbit at such significant distances from the Sun, they have the vast amount of the angular momentum in our solar system, basically all donated in the formation of the protoplanetary disk. So, without the conservation of angular momentum, the Earth and all the planets around in our solar system just wouldn't exist.